go wide or go home. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing with Amara, voice of the Conclave. This is the new digital-only Amara, who's representing the Selesnia with a very, very convokey deck. When Amara enters the battlefield, she generates a convocable spell. Now, some of these spells are not very good, and some of them are very, very good. Uh, of them, the ones you really want to get are oftentimes March of the Multitudes, um, Venerated Loxodon, Ancient Imperius, or Conclave Tribunal, or Knight Errant of Eos. Sometimes, though, you end up with a Restorer, or an Expedition, or an Overwhelm, and those are all still good cards, depending on the situation that you're in. In order to get a Convocable Commander out, you're going to have a lot of creatures that you want to tap. And how do you get so many creatures to tap? Well, that's easy! You play a deck that is just about one half, one drops. You can see right here, I have a stack of my favorite and most powerful one-drop creatures, ones that have entered the battlefield abilities, ones with good stats like 2-1, and ones that just generally play nicely with Amara Voice of the Conclave. We also have a couple cards that either go even wider, like Resolute Reinforcements, get a big benefit from how many creatures you have, like the Regal Bunnicorn or Adeline, or things that will just get you a little bit of card advantage from all these teeny tiny creatures. You'll also notice that I am playing Knight Errant of Eos, Venerated Loxodon, Ancient Imperiosaur, March of the Multitudes, and yeah, we're playing the Convocable cards in the deck too, because Amara's gonna make them for us, sure. But until she enters the battlefield again, we're not going to get more of those Convocable cards. Now you can put blink pieces in, things like Ephemerate or a Teleportation Circle into this deck, but because this deck is so aggressive, that blinkable value it might not even be important because the ideal with this deck is turn one, you're playing a one drop, turn two, you're playing two more one drops and you're convoking Anamara and turn three, you're getting out, let's say uh, 1616 Ancient Imperiosaur because you can. This deck is so aggressive and plays really well with things that either make more tokens or buff up your tokens like these two. Uh, I think this is a very fun deck and uh, I think that like giving your creatures vigilance so you can attack and then convoke with them is just great tech to have. This feels very, very Selesnia and you are going to see it very quickly as we go into the queue and we convoke out some sweet spells. Oh, your Kaslim deepest growth. This is a big green rampy deck. I have one of these. If you haven't seen the video for it, you should check it out, because it's fun. Uh, this hand does not have great green mana to convoke out of Mara early, but I don't need that, because I've got amazing one drops like the Banalish Knight Counselor. This is one of my favorite of the alchemy cards. This is actually like a really great design of, it has enlist and it gives you an extra delayed benefit for the enlist. Uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for it. I got this Brushland. I'm just going to swing in because I have nothing to enlist. I don't think they're going to trade with their halfling. And now I could either go double spell in here or just play the bunny. I'm going to play the bunny. Bunny! Look at it. It's so cute. It's so cute. It's a bunny unicorn. I want to give it a kiss right here. Except then I'd probably get poked by the horn. I want to pet it right here. Pet, 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 pet. So cute. Crashing Drawbridge. Ooh. Giving Arya Kaslam haste because when she hits, she can get lands and creatures into play. That's a that's a pretty good move right there. Let's go for Usher of the Fallen. Give her a runes. I don't want the buff on any of these. That's why I'm doing this uh, all pre-combat. I am going to enlist my Regal Bunnicorn. And swing in for six. They take it. Nice. I like Crashing Drawbridge as a haste enabler. It's a very fun one because it can also block early. Tommy of Bamboo Groves can get an extra land in play from their hand. They did have an extra land. And a Topiary Stomper, which will just grab them a basic land and bring it into play tapped. Now they could give these haste, but there isn't really a reason to. Uh, this can't attack or block. Nice. You have a uh, Fateful Absence, so we can hold that to kill Oyarkaslim. 
Or I could play even more creatures. It's like, how, how aggressive do I feel like being right now? Of course I want to be aggressive, be aggressive. I also have like an Adeline here. Ooh. An Adeline and the bunny could be big enough to just block all your castle next turn. No, I think I should hold the uh, Fateful Absence, uh, which means going for... Amara, uh, tap for green, tap for that, tap for some of yous. Amara will get the plus one, plus one counter. Don't beware me about petting it. The flavor text says I should pet the sweet, sweet bunny. Ooh, this also works. Conclave Tribunal uh, would let me just remove this crashing drawbridge. That saves me the headache of worrying about haste. And this is also more permanence here. So I'm going to attack in first. Whee! See if they want to chump block with their Kami. They do. Always obey the flavor text. Yeah. Tell that to the mighty brush wag. And we convoke out the Conclave Tribunal we got from Amara to exile the crashing drawbridge. No haste, no problem. Since they only have green creatures now, we could also give our Bunicorn protection from green and just swing in. Thank you, Giver of Runes. You're a good one drop. I mean, the, the name of the game with this deck is good one drops. Ooh, monkey! That can destroy these and destroy my Giver! When this attacks in, it'll be able to destroy my enchantments and artifacts, which is why enemy number one is now this monkey. I'm sorry, I know he's an ape, but he's monkey. They didn't have any humans, so they couldn't return him to hand. They say, nice, thanks. Uh, I will enlist attack, 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 and uh, the Threbid Inspector will be our enlistable here. Means this will be attacking for three and getting a good buff. Ooh, and they're going down to two. They do have seven, now eight mana. Since they have seven lands, the Topiary Stomper can attack or block. And the Cityscape Leveler! Blasting my bunny corn! First of all, rude. Second of all, that's not gonna save you. We have so many creatures here that we can attack with. And let's add one more to the mix. We're gonna say, good game. They got two life left, we go in! And between our little tiny weenies, we've got just enough to kill them. GG, all your Kaslam. Lagrella the Magpie. Lagrella the Magpie is going to be able to exile our creatures and their own creatures. This leads to a little bit of bouncy fun, but their creatures, if they come out of exile, get bigger. Ours don't, they just stay the same. But since we've got lots of good critters to throw out here, sure, you can take one or two of them. Ooh, a wall of blossoms to draw a card. I expect they will have a lot of good enter the battlefield stuff here. Um, I can bring out Amara this turn. I'm trying to decide if I want to. I'm gonna go for Gap. Yeah, Sky March or Aspirant. And then we're going to Convoke here. Bringing out Amara on turn two. And we've got Venerated Loxodon, March on Multitudes, or Nissa's Expedition. I've got plenty of lands in hand. I'm gonna grab that Loxodon so I can play some creatures next turn and then use them to convoke out an elephant. Nice, Soul Herder. Soul Herder gives them a blink every single turn. It's so good. Ooh, cool. A recruitment officer. I think I'm just going to go super wide here. Kind of hope for the best. Um, do I want Voice of Resurgence or Bun Bun? I'm gonna go for the bunny. Bunny, recruitment officer. Hey, everyone, get in here. Everything that's used to convoke the Loxodon gets a plus one, plus one counter. Our turn three has an army on the board. A meticulous archive they're surveilling. So look at how big this bunny is. 
What a good bunny! What do you exile? Do you exile the bunny because it's the biggest thing? As for Sentinel, because it's going to be taxing you? I mean, what, whatever they do, they're just clearing the counters off of whatever the card is. Because their plan is, I'm sure, to blink Lagrella, draw more cards, and then move things back into exile anyway. So, like, they may have just cleaned the counter off of the Sentinel, and now they're going to put the bunny in jail. A welcoming vampire. Followed by the Thraben Inspector. Uh, attacking on the ground's not that good for us here. Ooh, so I'm just going to swing in with this uh, Sky Marcher Aspirant. I could have held it back to get more convocability here, but right now we are going to be going for X equals three. That's going to be three more tokens, which we can use for more convocables. By the way, there's also some argument to be made to like just jump block with Amara. Her dying, kind of a good thing. The bunny. Sylvan Ranger gets them a basic land. They're just blinking the Inspiring Overseer that's going to draw them a card, gain them a life. In response to the trigger, one, two, three. Tappity, 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 tappity. Welcoming Vampire draws us a card. I love her. She's the best. Introducing Convocables. Brought to you by Hasbro. Draw a card off this vampire. Ooh, a little guy. A little guy that taps other things. Bringing out that windswept teeth. I'll just grab my fetch. I got plenty of time. Hey, Lucrella, you got any board wipes? I sure hope you don't. Uh, hey. I'm just gonna go ahead and go one, a two, a three, a four, mm, five, six. It's gotta be green. There's our seventh. So that's a 2020 uh, Ancient Imperiosaur. All right, this does not need to be tapped. So we're going to tap you. You and you, because they don't have a lethal swing unless they get a hoof and then, like, they'd have lethal anyway. That's a planes. We're going to scry it to the bottom. Going to pay two, draw a card. Ooh, resolute reinforcements. I'll swing in with the aspirant and the welcoming vampire. They take it. And, yeah, they'll have to deal with this. I'm wide. I like how their soul herder is like, yeah, that thing's the 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, they do have a way to exile it by blinking Lagrella, as long as they have two mana up. That's part of why I didn't, like, put too much into the Imperiosaur. I put in, you know, enough that I could do other stuff. Actually, I, I went full. <laughs> if you if you convoke for seven, you're going full. Ooh, spawning pod. An elite guard mage. Nice. I need to add spawning pod into more fun seekables. They're going to be able to pay the ward, too. But my bunny's back! The bunny doesn't have trample, so... Also, all the counters will get cleared off this. They do pay the two. I'm going to put Soul Herder in jail. Ooh, I could also just, like, blast it. I'm so wide here. Uh, Soul Herder, die! Ossification? Go ahead and throw Lagrella out of here. Resolute reinforcements. Make that bunny as big as it can get, and I can flash that out. We're going to swing in and deal a lot of damage. GG, Lagrella. Borborygmos and Fubblethup. These two are throwing lands at you, drawing cards, and just generally being a good, strong teamer creature. Uh, this seems like an okay start. Uh, we don't have quite as many one-drops as, as I would like, but I do like Delighted Halfling against any deck that has blue in it. Ah, and perfect. There's a little Sky Marcher Aspirant to help us get uh, the maximum value on our next turn. Nice. Cool Halfling. Or Brigmos and Fubblethup. 
Do you have counter spells? Do you have ramp? Probably lots of ramp. Or Brugmos and Fubblethip, if it's like my version of the deck, is less of a tempo deck and more of a big stompy creatures deck. I wonder if they're planning on just bouncing this back into my hand too. Hello, yes. Simic Charm. I forgot Simic Charm was even in Arena. Uh, I'm gonna replay the Delighted Halfling and then get out the Sky Marcher Aspirant. Uh, I am not going to be able to convoke Anamara this turn though, because, well, th they interrupted us. This Simic Charm also makes me think this might be a bit more of like a tempo deck. Hmm, I guess we'll find out. Metal Joe. They're bringing this in. They're not paying three life for it, though. That is fine with me. Uh, I have to decide which creatures I want to play here. I would like some card draw, so I'm going to go for a Welcoming Vampire. Do you have a counter spell for this? I'd like it if you didn't. They do. Okay, so I won't be able to Convoke at this turn. I'll just swing in for two. Can you use Convoke for colored cost? Yes, but you Convoke with the color of the creature. So, like, I have to make sure I'm either tapping this for the color I want, or I can use it for green for Convoke. But I would almost always want to make something legendary uncounterable. That's just how it goes. Wooded Foothills, crack this open. Grab my fetch land. Just maximizing my fixing here. Boromir. I didn't tap the delighted halfling there. That's fine. Do you have more counter spells? This so far, by the way, seems like it's much more of like the tempo version of this deck. Um, do I care about them countering my commander? I'm going to go with enough. Uh, I'm going to save the Kami. Mm, now nah, play the Kami. I don't need this. I'm going to tap this for green and then convoke with these two. This is to help prevent board wipes. I have um, three different spells in the deck that either make our stuff indestructible or phase us out uh, to prevent board wipes from just resetting all of our value. So far, they've already done a very good job of just holding us back. Sky Marcher Aspirant goes in for two and pass the turn back. Nice. And also, we are one away from the city's blessing. So, like, if I use Ardendale Fealty here, we'll have that city's blessing. And this dude will learn how to fly. Here's Borber, Rigmos, and Fubblethip. They'll draw a card, and they can choose to discard lands. They're not choosing discard lands, or they don't have lands to discard. Either way, that's fine with me. Uh, do I want a big-ass Imperiosaur? I actually want to tell Borbor and Fubblethip to get the heck out of here. Do you want to leave it in the graveyard or put it back in your hand? They're thinking about it. I'm not sure why they're thinking about it, but they certainly are. Hello? And we can swing in for quite a bit of damage here. Uh, I'm instead going to go for less damage this turn, setting up the big boy. Here's an Ancient Imperiosaur. I'm convoking five creatures for it, so it is a 16-16. And again, I have the ability to make it indestructible. Thanks, Boromir. Love ya, Boromir. Yeah, you're looking at that. It's got Ward 2, too. So, like, you want to kill it? You want to bounce it? It's going to be hard. Rootbound Crag comes in tap. They do not have any basic forests or mountains at all. Big Dinosaur! All your homies love Boromir. I mean, Boromir you should just put into your decks if you can anyway, because he's able to stop things like Emoti and Atali, Emergent Ultimatum. Anything that's casting spells for free gets stopped by Boromir. 
great card to have in your decks if you're going wide or just trying to stop your opponents. GG, Borborygmos and Fibblethup. Cool. Let's go super wide. Thrive and Inspector. The Grazer's got nothing to put into play. That's fine. We can still play it and then bring out Amara. One, two, three. Love that for me. Um, I like Loxodon Overwhelm. Uh, because I'm not quite wide enough for the Overwhelm yet, I'm gonna go for the Loxodon. We also have the Knight Errant of Aos here to get us more uh, small creatures. Ooh, okay. Uh, Giver of Runes. I can play that first. And do I want more cards in hand? Or do I want to buff my current board? I want to buff my current board. Ooh, actually, wait. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Do that. Uh, leave back the Amara. So she can just swing in here. Amara again. Like, once she's out, she can die. That's cool. I could also have, like, used her to Convoke. It just didn't feel necessary. I've got two mana here. Let's use them both. Uh, I am going to squeak by. I'm going to make the Amara bigger. Because if they bounce this back into my hand, I don't really mind. Uh, I will go to combat. Hey, everyone! Get in here. Training up that hopeful initiate. They've only got four mana up. We're down to eight. We'll play that squeaky little mouse. Squeaky and cheeky. Five mana now. Emoti usually just gets ramp. What could they get on five mana or six if it's a creature, a green creature? Anything that can save you? Yeah, that's what I thought. GG, Emoti. Jadar, ghoul caller of Nephalia, has a constant stream of zombies to sacrifice. Each turn, when you end it, if they don't have a decayed zombie, they get a decayed zombie. It's very good for them. Uh, let's go ahead and shock this in and start off with some fun Legion's Landing. Legion's Landing gets us a vampire, and if we attack with three or more creatures, this flips over and becomes a land. I'm going to name Elf on this. I'm going to use that to play Reese the Redeemed. I'm going to play a Giant Killer. And now we're going to Convoke at Amara. Something that's kind of good about our deck versus their deck is they usually play a lot of these symmetrical sacrifice abilities. Things that are like, I sacrifice a creature, you sacrifice a creature. And guess what? We have plenty of creatures to sacrifice because we are a go-wide, hyper-aggressive deck. And James, thank you so much for the raid. James, welcome. Uh, you got here just in time to watch my Okie Dokie Convokey deck. Uh, wherein I say Okie Dokie and Convokey. Uh, I want to attack in with three things. Uh, to flip this over. So we're gonna go one, two, three. We'll see if I did my math right here. Doot, doot, doot. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna look for some two drops. Nice! Isamaru and Novice Inspector. We all been punching chunks. I don't know what you guys were doing today on a James stream, but I'm going to guess you were punching chunks. Gonti will steal a card from our deck. Most of our cards are not actually that individually powerful, so I'm hoping they get something completely useless. Uh, Skyclave Apparition, we could get Gonti off the battlefield, clear the way for a bigger attack. Uh, that sounds decent enough for me. I wish I had a little bit more white mana here. I could also just, like, start swinging in. Nah, let's get the Gonti out of here. Gonti, be gone! T. And everybody, go for the face. I don't know if it was lethal, but it definitely was damage. GG. Agnes, the dragon's lash. Agnes is a big old lady lizard who gets you treasures when you attack with creatures with haste. This means that she's refunding part of her mana cost, at least for the next turn. I got this Razor Verge Thicket, and I'm going to bring out Usher of the Fallen, a nice little two one for one mana that can produce more creatures. Oh, and thank you, Anonymous Gifter, for gifting a sub to James. The greedy freebooter. Um, hmm, I don't have a green creature here. So I can't bring out all of these and then convoke Amara. I, I could play either Legion's Landing or Novice Inspector and then convoke Amara. 
Uh, and I think that's probably worth it. I'm going to do Novice Inspector. And Convoke. Doo -doo -doo. What do we get? Overwhelm, Triplicate Spirits, and March of the Multitudes. I'm definitely going for March since we have such a good go-wide start. Especially with the Ancient Imperiosaur. Ooh, Reckless Fireweaver. Treasures are going to get them pings to my face. There's another nice green source here. Legion's Landing. I could actually attack with three here, but I'm not going to. I can wait on this. I'm just trying to count out. Yep. All right, we're going to pass the turn. A ravenous squirrel when they sacrifice artifacts or creatures. They get a counter. This also uh, can sacrifice itself. You can't have a uh, auto cannibalistic squirrel. One, two. Bing bong. This seems adequately wide. What do y'all think? Uh, I will squeak by. I'm going to put that buff on the knight token since it's nice and chunky. I will swing in with one, two, three. I do want to flip this. Okay, they're going to let me kill the uh, freebooter off that. That's fine. Oh, THC3PO, thank you for the sub. By the way, if I'm not responding to things right away, it's because I have earplugs in because there's really loud construction on my street. <laughs> that dies, gives them a treasure. We're gonna play the cheeky house mouse. And we're gonna go one, a two, a three, a four, five. And then we gotta use some of this uh, nice green mana down here. Jim Davis with the raid. Dang, we are getting all the friends in here. Welcome! Uh, yesterday, Jim and I were playing in a Twitch Rivals together. If you guys didn't watch it, it was very fun. Uh, it was a Family Game Nights Twitch Rivals. Oh, look at that! We won against Agnes because we had a 1616 Imperiosaur. By the way, common theme. We win games with a 1616 Imperiosaur. Good card. It was really fun. Thank you for raiding, Jim! Helen, Inquisitive Prodigy. He can ramp, make various artifacts, and turn them into card draw. He's actually got an ability that gets you a clue and lets you play an additional land. But because that's an adventure, you can then play him from exile. Let's start with this Esper Sentinel. I don't feel like I need to turn one curse him because he usually comes out on turn three. And this way, if they try to play some non-creature spells, we might get to draw some cards, which I like. I like getting to draw cards. Uh, I could go for Amara this turn. Instead, I'm going to curse the Kellen. Kellen Inquisitive Prodigy. Oh, it's Kellen. Here we go. There's so many different Kellens. There's about to be another one, too. Bam. Oh, get him, for Sentinel. Yeah, you want to play your adventure? You want to tail the suspect? I get to draw a card. Now, in the spirit of going wide, we're going to bring out Adeline. We'd have also played Amara this turn, uh, throwing down the Novice Inspector for some Convoke. But I really like getting down this Adeline early because she gets so big based on the number of creatures we have. And she has Vigilance, so I can attack in with her and then use her to Convoke. Vigilance is so good with Amara. And anything else with Convoke. All right, Windswept Teeth. They have four mana, but their commander costs six because we cursed him. I think Kellen the Kid, the next Kellen, is the last of the Kellens. Ooh. I've got a choice between, like, damage and slamage here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this for next turn, the Flowering of the White Tree. Do we have a counterspell for the Invasion of Gobagan? They have a Fading Hope. They're gonna bounce Adeline back into hand. Do you pay the one? Asking for a friend. The friend is me. Do you pay the one? They did pay the one. They still have two mana left, so they can um, sacrifice that clue. I do have to be careful, by the way, about artifacts like this one, because they can just destroy it. Ooh, monkey. Um... Of these, I think Kogla and Silverback Elder are the ones that I'm kind of most worried about. 
Oh yeah, they got a Juari disruption. But if they use that, they won't have it available as a land. One novice inspector. They draw a card. We get a clue! Look, you can blast my clues, Kellen. I don't really know why Kellen destroys artifacts. Feels like an irresponsible thing to be doing. Bringing out Adeline. I will attack with the human token, because we get a second human token. Oh, does it have to go to face? Oh, I thought I could direct it at the battle. That's fine. Um, boop, boop, boop. We got Loxodon, March, and Knight Errant. Uh, I am going to go for the March of the Multitudes because we have a flowering of the white tree. It's just tampering with evidence. <laughs> he would. Oh yeah, I guess it says player or planeswalker. Because it doesn't say the same, like, thing your opponents control, it just lets you go wide off it. Ah, uh, Adeline's now just a legitimate businesswoman. Sure is. Uh, let's go ahead and use up some of that nice white mana. She's still legendary, by the way. She is a legendary businesswoman. Look at that. Look at all that beautiful text. And we're going to sit here. Because this is going to be our March of the Multitudes turn. Don't mind me. Certainly not just waiting for you to tap out. I'm also, I guess, holding a heroic intervention. Just in case. Hi, Kellen. Are you going to destroy this? Ooh, I actually will sacrifice that and draw a card. You can't destroy that. And we get one, two. Boop, 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 boop. You should attack me. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, they have the ability to block two of these. If they block the two biggest, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. It is not quite lethal if we use the restless prairie here. What a shame. So we're going to kill the monkey. Ook, ook. I know. Tragic. Uh, I will play the Luminarch Aspirant. Throw a counter on my legitimate businesswoman here. And we're gonna swing. Let's see, we got eight. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. And we're gonna throw the two lifelinkers over here at the invasion of Gobakan. Killing the Esper Sentinel feels fair to me. This will come out and transform! Also, I'll draw a card. Whee! They're going to be able to destroy this by attacking uh, the Esper Sentinel by attacking anyway. He's got Vigilance. He does the thing. I don't, I don't have any artifacts. Oh, nice. They're going to target their indestructible artifact land. So they just get to draw a card. He does not say if it is destroyed. He just says if you control the permanent. They have enough for an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, which I'm a little worried about. Because this does not protect me from that. Oh! Resistor! They give it a $10 reduce! I'm glad we had a good game. Um, Resistor was playing the Oyer Kaslam deck we matched up against. Okay, that that's a Thopter. That's a Goose? Are we, uh, are we just good here? Oh yeah, we're good. We animate the Restless Prairie. We swing in with everything. And they're dead. GG, Kellen. Amara, voice of the Conclave against herself. Uh, I guess we'll keep this and hope we just get a good game against them. Uh, actually, I'm, I think I'm gonna throw back this hand. 
Alright, yeah, I like this. This is good. Hello? Hey. Hi, Umiat. I think something kind of cool about this deck is that it is relatively budget-friendly. And part of that is because it is a, um... It is a deck that's using a lot of just, like, cheap spells. And a lot of those cheap spells happen to be commons and uncommons. Hello there, Avacyn's Pilgrim. Okay, Cleric. When I have Cavern of Souls for me, it's usually naming um, Elf or Human. Because we do have a lot of humans in this deck. Oh, there's some there's some Clerics. Ooh, the Invasion of Gobakan. Uh, I would say that the scariest card in our hand is Torrens. Now, in a lot of matchups, Skyclave Apparition is the best piece. But the Torrens brings us... From wide to extremely wide. Uh, this this card could get out of control fast in a deck that's chock full of one drops. Oh, and they know it. Don't don't you love it when you're on like the same page as your opponent of like, yep, that's the problem. This card right here is the problem. I am not trading because I would like to get my Amara out next turn. Oh, but that one is a bunny. No, okay, bunny Bunny can come out in another turn. Here comes Amara. Oop. What do we got? Conclave Tribunal, that lets us take out one of their things. Knight Errant of Aos, that rewards us for going wide, and this makes us wide. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Knight Errant of Aos. Next turn, uh, I guess we could just bring out the bunny, or if there's something worth Skyclaving, like, I don't know, a creature. The big thing you don't want to really hit is Okay, that's that's worth hitting. Is their commander because then they just move it out of exile and do it again. Let's say uh, Luminarch Aspirant here is the scariest piece. She buffs herself. Ugh. This Johnny is also really tempting. Just like buff myself up, get a little vigilance going, swing in. I could also just like bunny savior knight errant. I know what I want. It's all of this. What do we get? Delany and Initiate. Delany will make it so if their creatures get too big, they won't be able to block. Delany will also let us get double triggers off certain creatures. Uh, Amara entering the battlefield gets two triggers. Uh, Skyclave Apparition entering or leaving the battlefield does get two triggers, so you have to be very careful with that. Um... A lot of good pieces out here. Now they can still attack the evasion of Gobakan here if they really want to flip it. Nice giver of runes. Someone's wide. We still don't know what they got off Amara. Uh, they know what we got because they can see the A24 on the Knight Errant of Aos. I wonder if their deck is any different from mine. I, I'm in this this place where, like, I built this deck just kind of guessing how I wanted to do it. And I had a lot of people like, oh, why aren't you putting in more blink pieces for the commander? So uh, I don't I don't know if other people are just building it in different ways. Nice. All right. So by the way, this Loxodon they just had in their deck. This was not generated by Amara. Yeah, I'm just like out here with this Ajani, like, yeah, I kinda I kinda wanna. Hopeful initiate. Johnny. Give everybody some buffins. Go to combat. Swing with you two, because you're the chunkiest. Do I wanna swing in with everybody else? Are they forced to block this? I don't think they are. 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No. Okay. Boop. Lovely. Now let's see what they got. They're saying good game. They could have something that gives a really good buff here. And with Boromir available, um, it could get nasty. By the way, Boromir, if they convoke, um, if I convoke, I should say, something that's too big, it won't get there. Oh, there's a good game because they only had one big old dino. And one big old dino can't block our army. GG, fellow Amara. The first sliver with a Karuga companion. And you know what that means? It means it's not actually a sliver deck. The best slivers, a lot of them cost two mana. So when you have a Karuga, it means everything in the deck costs three or more. So they're gonna go big and ramp hard. I've got um, a decent start, not as many one drops. I honestly could have mulliganed this, but I do like just like get some ramp out, Elvish Mystic. I could still play Amara on turn two. Oh, perfect, and another one drop. That's more value for my Convocables. Get a clue. And Convoke. Moravian Viking. Did I give it a two-month resub? Um, removal's probably going to be good. I don't think I'm going to want Ramp, and I don't think I'm going to want Overwhelm. So we're going to grab the Conclave Tribunal here. Okay, Giant Killer. I might want to save for uh, killing the first sliver, but we can also play it hoping to uh, tap things down here. They didn't give me anything to, like, exile and remove. That's fine. Oh, cool. Doggy. I like this dog. Bark, bark. Swing it in. Get my four damage done. This pack leader uh, does still grow off a lot of these convocables. Solve the equation. What are you tutoring for? Late in the game, uh, solve the equation typically is getting big ramp. Oh, show and tell. Hmm. With the knowledge of a show and tell, I'm going to play Haywire Might. Hey. Wire Might. Let's go in. Um, just all of y'all. I'm bringing out the henge. I, th I think y'all know I'm putting the henge in. All right, so Wrath of God, that's fine. They already had one in hand. But that's going to make it a lot harder for us to catch up when they do show and tell. What do you think they're gonna show and tell for? Atraxa, uh, Omni. Should I just go for the Conclave Tribunal? take away whatever they get. Let's try it. Nice Omni you got there. You got anything at instant speed? I didn't think so. Wow, that actually worked way better than I thought it would. I'm pleasantly satisfied by the outcome of that turn. Please don't have any removal for this. Uh, thank you. Aiming. They wanted everything for free. We can't let them have anything for free. Uh, I think we use the Apparition to take away their ramp. Also draws us a card. We love that. Thank you, Welcoming Vampire. You're so sweet. Um, I could Convoke out, or I could get some damage here. Uh, three damage versus Amara. I'm going to say I hope they don't have another board wipe. Just bring out Amara. Arson Multitudes, another Conclave Tribunal, and this is Expedition. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Conclave Tribunal here. I was actually hoping to get the uh, Overwhelm there. Or, because I think that would have been the strongest finisher. We're gonna go to combat. We're gonna swing in with everything. Okay, they're not quite dead, but we're not in a bad spot here. Here comes the first sliver. Let's see what it cascades into. That's a surgical metamorph. It can become a copy of the Conclave Tribunal. 
that's a problem. It could also become a copy of Skyclave Apparition and then exile the Conclave Tribunal. Uh, either way, they're getting rid of this, and that's going to allow them to cast the things from their hand for free. I can't do that much about that. My stuff is not at instant speed. They did hit us with a good game, though, which I'm a little concerned about. Um... Okay, I can I can make a four for at instant speed. Sorting this does not stop the exile, and that's an emergent ultimatum. Yep. Yes, yeah, so if you uh if you exile this in response to its uh, exile ability, you just don't get a token. This is just a permanent exile, kind of no matter what we do. Yeah, ultimatum. Uh, what are you taking? Three extra turns? Ah, two turns and a tutor. Um, or more free spells in a tutor. That's like the uh, backup in case I get rid of that. I will give you one extra turn, uh, free spells off the top, and no tutor, no problem. Yeah, first sliver gamers are a mistake. Guys, where's my Selesnia lightning bolt? Genesis Ultimatum. Elspeth conquers death. Uh, they could hit the Skyclave Apparition with that, or Velcoming Vampire. Okay, that gets them a 3-3 three, three token. Remember, they do have an extra turn after this. They can also draw a lot of cards off Karuga. Scholar of the Ages, they are going to be looping Time Warp. Thanks. I hate it. Well, I think that we did our best. We got them to three life. And uh, unfortunately, now we're just at the point where they're going to be able to continuously loop free spells. Um, I was able to get rid of part of that engine. But by the way, you can like grab uh, Sublime Epiphany with that card and just keep taking the same extra turn over and over and over. I'm not here for it, so I am going to skedaddle by first sliver. Our opponent's deck is legendary with Hajar Loyal Bodyguard. This is a pretty cool commander. Um, I also used to run one of these and it's secretly a bard class deck or maybe not so secretly. Uh, if I keep this hand, I can double spell on turn two and have a pretty nice turn three. I'm going to mulligan and look for something a little bit better. This actually looks great to me. Great to Verge Thicket. Bringing out Warden of the Itter Sky. We're going to say hey, because they're blowing us kisses. Kisses for us. Ajar can be sacrificed to make your legendaries stronger and indestructible. Which means, well, they can do a lot with them. Uh, I could go for Amara this turn, or I could just play like Voice of Resurgent, or uh, Virtue of Loyalties, Instant. Uh, I, I think Playing Amara here sounds fine. Let's do it. Ooh. What do we got? Uh, Triplicate Spirits, Knight Errant, and Loxodon. I don't have that many creatures in hand, so I think I'm going to go with the Knight Errant. And I don't think I have to get that big on these first few turns to get through the 3-3 that they can play this turn. Not when I have loads of good tappables. Ooh! They have their commander! Sorry, you know, their commander. It's Bard Class! I love Bard Class. Bard Class, I, like, you'll hear me joke about that it's the secret commander of the deck. I'm being serious. It is the secret commander of their deck. Um, or maybe not so secret. It's really good. Do I want to go for the Knight Errant of Eos here? Um, or throw down one of these? Yeah, let's just bring out the Knight Errant. See if we got any two drops in here. Probably. Our deck's mostly one drops. Perfect. I do like Bard class. Yeah, they they put two mana into it. Their commander becomes free and becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Level it up. Level it up. Level it up. Let me watch my opponent go off. Oh, Toblerone. Hi, Tobalor. Hey, Hajar. 
How you guys doing? You having a good time? I am. Uh, I guess I could go for the Ancient Imperiosaur here, but I would rather offer death to Tovalor. Tovalor, would you care to die? May I have a chop? Or are you going to sacrifice your commander? All right, they're going to sacrifice their commander to save him. What that means is we are not attacking in this turn. Uh, I'm going to use the Warden of Ender Sky to go one, two, three. Tap! That's a welcoming vampire. Welcoming vampire I could double spell with next turn. Sounds good enough to me. Uh, I also, I might just play uh, the Virtue of Loyalty because it's really good. This is indestructible. We don't attack. They can afford to play Hajar again. If they attack in with Tovor, they'll get to draw a card too. Ooh, a Goblini for further discounts. Hajar now costs one mana. I love that for them. Ooh, Arlen. Nice also for one mana. Oh, Bard class is so good. I love Bard class. I love Bard class in a Gruul Legends deck. It's just so good. And yeah, my Gruul Legends deck, like, started as Clothis, became, um... Halana and Elena, and then became Hajar. I have four. I'm trying to decide if I want to go for an Imperiosaur or Virtue here. It's like one big boy. It just sounds really, really fun. I have one creature. I get a second one off Amara. Of Yay. Chunkus! It's an 18-18. Oh, they give me a little angry Hedron. I'll give them a happy little Rowan. They have three wolves or werewolves, so Tovler actually did flip here. Turn it into nighttime. Arlen likes this. She could become a big a woo. She could also get them more mana. In case they want to, like, I don't know, level up our class again. Their spells are all practically free. Short of, like, a chaos warp, Gruul's not that good at dealing it with this. No, Gruul does things like this. Oh, you're so big. I love you, my big old dinosaur. Ooh, Inferno with a star mount. Let's go. It has haste. It can't be countered. Nice. Good damage. If they turn this into the 5-5... Five, five... Okay, they could also use the mana to like pump this up. And this can give a slight buff just to their legends. One, a two, that's nine damage in the air. I'll take it. Not like I feel like I have much of a choice. Uh, next turn I can use the giant killer to tap that down. As long as I have two mana up, I should say. Uh, that means I would not be able to play the virtue of loyalty. I think the kind of like easy things for me to do, though. Uh, I am going to be swinging in with some of these. Just gotta pick which. Like, swinging in with the voice is kind of a good thing, because if it dies, I get something sweet. I'm just going to swing in with the Imperiosaur. Hey. Go get him, big boy. Prevent a little damage, maybe? Chungus, I choose you. The Chungus Among Us. Hmm. 
They're putting, like, everything on this. Okay, um, only their legendaries are indestructible, so that's fine. Seven damage still goes through, and almost all those creatures die. I wonder if they thought that was going to make all of them indestructible, or if that's just the, the way they wanted to play that turn out. Uh, making sure I'm leaving up white mana. I played this this turn? Yeah, okay. Actually, welcoming Vampire. Uh, Warden of the Inner Sky, tapping... Amara, and this and that, so I can draw a card. Scrying two, King Dad, I like King Dad. Passing the turn. I don't think they can bring it to 20 power, so I'm not that worried about the uh, second ability on this. I'm not even going to wait. This is a uh, auto pass value. Is uh, popping a clue or a treasure playing a spell for voice? No, it is not. Um, that is sacrificing an artifact, which is typically activating the ability of the artifact. Aw, booties! Cutie booties. And a boat. Boat wearing boots. Looks like they're blasting my um my vampire out of the sky. They could crew this and put boots on it. No, they're putting boots on the Inferno, so I can't tap it anymore. You were new boot goofing. We are new boot goofing. But I don't think they can prevent lethal here. Especially not once I drop King Dad. The numbers. All right, King Dad, show him what's what. Give him a whole bunch of math. I give him a kiss. No, I want to kiss this. There we go. Kisses. GG. Emoti, celebrant of bounty. You already know what she does. She ramps, she plays big stuff. Uh, this hand's okay. We could go for the turn to Amara. I think I probably will. Let's rumble. They do go first. Let's see if they have some turn one ramp. Looks like it's just going to be a tapped land. I don't mind that. Usher of the Fallen. Hello, yes, I can make tokens for the low, low cost of two mana, but only on turns that I've attacked. Ooh, the scout, this is perfect. Okay, so we bring out the Thrabbit Inspector. Get that sweet enter the battlefield value. We'll bring out the scout. What is it? It's the Daug. Mm, don't want the Daug. I'm gonna say no to the Daug. Convoke. One, two, three, four. Amara voice at a conclave. What do we get? It's Night Aaron of Aos. Triplicate spirits are overwhelmed. Um, the overwhelm actually could be pretty nice because we do have March to the Multitudes here. But I'm going to go for the Night Aaron of Aos because I like card advantage. What else is new? Ew, what about the Alpha? Gross, bro. Putting the power nine into their deck. Who would do such a filthy thing? I'll play the Giver of Runes. And do we want to convoke? I do. One, two, three, four, five. Leaves me with two mana in case I get some one drops to play, like you. And oh, do I want Delny here or Adeline? I could just grab like Delny and Adeline, but I'd love to play something this turn. I can just, I'll eat my clue. Downey and Adeline. Crack open this clue, see if we get a land. Huh, now I got an Elvish Mystic. If this attacks in, they will get the scry, but they also won't be able to block with it. Settle the wilds, get them a land and a four drop permanent into hand. Could be something like Key to the Archive, always a classic in ramp decks. Or uh, Invasion of Zendikar, another very good one that's a little bit less uh, arena only. Hmm, two spells or one, two spells or one. I really like Adeline. I was also thinking of King Darien here for just like massive removal. Uh, I don't think I need the giver, so we're just going to tap some little dudes. 
Uh, summoning sickness. Great. Oracle, be gone. Your face, be attacked. And they leave. Probably because we have, um... Numbers. Adeline's gonna be attacking for like 12 damage next turn. The goods. <laughs> GG emoji. Kenrith, the returned king. Good old king dad himself here to reanimate creatures, buff creatures, give creatures haste, and draw cards. Also gain, frankly, obscene amounts of life. This is uh, not a bad start. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves a fetch land and use it to grab a shock land. Temple Garden, please come into play so we can get out the puppy. Bark, bark. Sadly, I did not draw another one drop creature, but I don't think it's bad to get out Amara off just two other critters in the field. We have Loxodon, Arantipeos, and Imperiosaur. I'm not super wide, so I don't love Imperiosaur here. Um, but it is very aggressive. Same, same with this. These are the two more aggressive ones. Um, and this one's card advantage. I'm gonna go for the Loxodon. Hopeful Initiate's not bad. Bring it out. And I'm going to tap one, two, three... And then I'm going to use these lands. Because I do want to attack with this pack later to this turn. It's getting a counter either way. Doesn't need to. King Dad with the big numbers. The Initiate also will be able to use some of these plus one plus one counters to destroy artifacts and enchantments. If we need to. Uh, by the way, a lot of Kenrith decks are based around like using lots of good activated abilities. But some of them are just five color good stuff. Uh, with usually a reanimator sub theme because that is an absolutely nuts ability. Oh, they killed my puppy dog! Excuse me? You where's grandpa him? That's just atrocious. Boromir, protect my board. Uh, if I attack in with this, she won't grow any bigger. I could actually hold her back and then tap one, two, three to get a counter and a scry. I think that's worth the two damage. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Ooh, somebody's thirsty. Let's let them put things in graveyard, such as creatures to reanimate. Ah, yes! Uh, King Dad, the other one. Yeah, we have two King Dads, Kenrith and King Darian. King Darian, I think, gives us the best shot at lethal here. World Shaper can put more things in graveyard and bring lands back from the graveyard. We're gonna play this and just attack in. Uh, that should be lethal. Our creatures get plus one, plus one. They can only block one thing. GG, Kenrith. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you liked my Selesnia weenies with Amara, Voice of the Conclave. This is one of my favorite types of decks to play. I love Convoke. One of my favorite decks I ever played was a Convoke-based Selesnia deck. So getting to play some of my favorite cards like Voice of Resurgence and Amara is always a good time. I found that this deck also did really, really well in the queue, probably because it's hyper aggressive and unless you can respond with a board wipe pretty early on, you're going to get overrun, typically by big old dinosaurs and elephants and knights. It's a really fun deck too, and it has a good number of uncommons in it. So if you're trying to build it on a budget, there's a good number of one drops you can throw in the deck, buff up, and swing in with. Uh, if you want the deck list, by the way, it's in the description of the video. And if you'd like us to suggest a commander for me to play, go ahead and leave a comment. Say what deck you'd like me to build. This was actually a request that uh, I pitched to my audience on Twitch, and they said, yeah, we want to see Amara. And if you'd like to join me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Amazonian is my main channel. It's where I stream almost every single day, and I get to brew lots of fun decks like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and have a brutal day.